No, thanks anyway. I got no co-host, girl. Don't give a shit. I guess I can call Jeremiah. There's nothing. The art of suicide. Night guns and hair. Curls flying every which way. Please be dead. Please be dead. Love signs. Yeah? I'll do it. About a month ago, there was a fan film that was released on Vimeo. It lasted about a day, and it got taken down because of copyright violations. It got put back up about three or four days later because the company that was threatening to sue realized that it was in the parody genre, yeah. which kind of bypasses copyright, yeah. and plus the fact that the filmmakers weren't making any money off of it. And that was a Power Rangers fan film by Joseph Kahn. You might know him. He directed Torque. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Which is one of my favorite Guilty yeah. Pleasure movies because it is so fucking bad, it's kind of awesome. How come the, the, the Power Rangers thing didn't have a motorcycle fight? Ned? <laughs> It was written by James Vanderbeek. He also stars in it. It also stars Katie Sackhoff yeah. from Battlestar Galactica and Halloween Resurrection. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it is extremely violent and bloody yeah, and I crass. Was, and I was very surprised. Like when I, cause I, I resisted watching because I was like, ah, oh, I can't. And I heard people talk about it. And then I just watched it moments ago and I was like, wow, that's not what I was expecting. To and see. and the, the weird thing that this was released kind of is weird because there's also like a feature film reboot coming out like within the next year yeah. I want to say and it's being aimed for kids it's yeah. I mean, maybe not kids maybe for teens or yeah. whatever it's PG-13-ish I guess yeah. and then this you got not this which is almost X-rated yeah <laughs> I mean, a hard it's, R. It's a hard it's, R. It's really hard well, there's R. No I mean, there is, there's no nudity in no, it. But, you know, it's could, a lot of violence. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a little <laughs> lesbo makeout scene going yeah. on in there but whatever. It's really adult and it kind of yeah. took me by surprise. Uh, acting, I can't say, is all that great. Mm. I mean, especially when it plays the Green Rangers. Do you, pretty bad. Do you really watch an action movie for acting, though? No, not yeah, really. But it, but it helps. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, Katie Sackhoff looks like she's really trying. James Vanderbeek looks like he's really trying to, yeah. to shed that Dawson image. Although he did have a moment where, like, when he threw the table, I, all, all I could hear was, I don't want your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was that, like that moment. I just I really was like, uh oh. He's channeling Varsity Blues. And I was expecting when uh, he's face-to-face -face with, I think she's, she's playing Kimberly the Pink Ranger. Yeah. When he's face-to-face, -face, like seriously, like this close to her, and she goes, go fuck yourself. I expected to see that shot from the final episode of Dawson where he started crying. Going, ah! Don't talk to me like that. I'm a sensitive flower. Uh. Uh, but yeah, I was surprised Vanderbeek was actually kind of cool in it. Yeah, he, yeah, got a, he got a fight scene in, and... There's some twists, there's some really cool fight scenes in it, even though they're not nearly as fast as I would have yeah. liked. Yeah. It's always kinda of like someone saying they're waiting to get kicked in the face. It was, it's it's not your it's not your grandpa's power. power Rangers. Rangers. Yeah. Well that was the thing, was like I'm, as I was watching it, it's kinda of like they want it to be adult oriented, but they're still pacing the fights like it was yeah. the show. Yeah. Which is just kinda of like well, I'm gonna the, kick you real quick, and, and then I'm gonna stand the, there, uh, and then I'm gonna kick you. <laughs> and they kept the outfits too, like which were yeah, really, which, think, and, yeah, and they're like really weird looking rubbery Batman nipple suits. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there was that one scene which I almost, I kind of wondered it was like paying homage to Iron Man with like the shooting of the helmet. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah. I, I really like how the Black Ranger, the Black Ranger gets basically the best fight in, yeah. in, the, in the short. Because I'm assuming it, that was like the, the one guy they hired that was probably like the a real fighter. martial yeah. artist. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it was kind of cool. It's like the first thing he does is he like throws his helmet at some guy that's getting ready to shoot him. It hits the guy in the head, breaks his nose. 
and it bounces back and lands directly on the guy's head. You know, and la- yeah. that was just a rad ass shot. Yeah. And then there's, yeah, there's even the ones where he's like taking shots in the head from people's guns, and they're reflecting back into the people that shot them. And killed yeah, them. it's kind of rad. I mean, it's just, it's, just it's, it's really fun. It's, it's, yeah. it's kind of, it has kind of a stupid ending. Well, yeah. I thought you know the whole twist at the end. I was like, uh, okay, you had to bring that character back. Yeah. But uh, hey, you know they, they, they brought Zed? that. Yeah. Well, 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 Alpha. I was surprised. Alpha. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah. Where's Alpha. Zordon? Where the fuck is Zordon? They're talking smack about him the whole time, yeah. right? and Zordon even get the, you know a chance to say like, "Hey, I needed some help, okay?" They're skateboarding in the park. I said, "They'll do." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hire some better actors. I would say tone down the the blood splashes against the, the lens type of thing that they were constantly doing during the fights. And I think you might have something pretty cool, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. No. It's and, like, well, and the director, they made, they, like I said, this, the director put his own money into it. The guy who produced it. Well, who owns the rights to Power Saban. Rangers? Okay, yeah. And, the, and uh, they and were the ones that, that threatened them. Took it, They got it taken down, like, the day of. Yeah. And it already had, like, a million views. Yeah. They had it taken down because they said it was it was copyright free. But I understand and, Saban is, yeah, like, well, completely overprotective. Of yeah, them. well, because they're, they're the big, like, cartoon. They were, the, like, in the 90s, like, because they had, they did, oh, they did the X-Men this, cartoon and yeah, then also the Power Rangers. How long has this show been going? Yeah. It's been going since 92-ish? Yeah. And it's still on right now? Yeah. It's and like, they're making yeah, another movie? Different iterations, yeah. yeah. The they just keep years, reinventing yeah. it. I don't yeah. know if it's all Japanese footage anymore, but I don't think it is. But No, I, but I'm sure they've done this point. Well, yeah, it was considered, it was considered... Like, the lawyers for, was it Avi Shankar, I think it's the guy who produced it or whatever, he, he, his lawyers pitched it to the, to Saban ads, it was, it was considered a parody, it was, it was done because we love the show, and all that, it wasn't done to make money, because they aren't making any money off of it, and I guess they felt like, alright, but then the funny, (laughs) the funny part was, then the guy that played the Green Ranger saw it, and he was like, no, that's not what our show was about. (laughs) You're like, well, you know what? All your fans are now grown-ups yeah. <laughs> who, who don't want to see, like, oh, gosh, gee, what's the yeah. moral of today's episode? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, it's the only reason, you know, Spider-Man's, like, the real reason he's relevant is because he changed with the damn times, yeah. you know? It's like... <laughs> um, so, yeah. It could be cool, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. When in doubt, just whip it out! I'm sure most of you have probably noticed that the uh, the two big comic book corporations, you know, Marvel and DC, have really kind of like after like they started doing the the movies, comics have kind of started to lack. I feel I don't know about you. I don't know if you've I haven't really kept, been yeah. doing much comic reading lately. Um, but the problem I, I really feel with the comics right now is that they have this game of let's shake things up. Let's restart and reboot exactly. everything. Exactly. I know there is a Marvel doing Marvel's that again. Gonna, yeah, Marvel is going to Didn't do they that. Just do no, that? that was that was D, DC did the New Fifty Two. Yeah. And and that that's even with the, apparently with the Marvel Now thing. All that really was was just let's let's start everything at number one again. But, and, it, kept, but it was the still the same yeah, stories continuing. It was the same stories continuing. Okay, that and makes it, no sense. Exactly. The editor in chief is Axel Alonso, and he's really learned a lot of these choices, kind of came into play and that's when like and I don't know it's just now understand I have no problem if they make a change that moves a character forward but when it's a blatant change like I said just to like hey let's mix shit up with a lot of these mainstream books I'm having a hard time getting through them because it's just the right the, the great writing that was there five or ten years ago is not there anymore. It's just like they don't really know what to do with these characters. Since Alonzo kind of took over as editor-in-chief of Marvel, has kind of driven me to look at other aspects of comics, and which are like, you know, the, the independent publishers. Uh, like you have Dynamite, you have Avatar Press, uh, IDW. IDW, and Image is actually blowing up right now. They're, they're coming back, you know, I guess they were big in the 90s, kind of petered out, but you know, they're starting to come back because they're, they, they're focused more on creator-owned. I actually thought it'd be nice to, uh, for those people who are kind of fed up with the mainstream comics, I brought a few suggestions of titles that you may have overlooked. Bear in mind, I am a huge Garth Ennis fan, so there is going to be a lot of Garth Ennis talk, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the picture's on. His first child is going to be named Garth Ennis. No, it's going to be Logan. Oh, <laughs> <It's> really? 
This one is uh, The Boys. This has actually kind of gotten a lot of, got a lot of uh, notoriety in the last couple years. Uh, it's kind of an underground hit. Um, it is Garth Ennis is sort of take, letting out his frustration on superheroes. I went to a panel where he even said it disappoints him that the highest selling comic books are always superhero comics. When there are so much, when there's so much more out there. With this one, he really kind of satirizes superheroes. It's got a, a, a mixture of action, comedy, and if you're familiar with anything Garth Ennis written, seriously fucked up scenes. <laughs> the first two volumes were written by Garth Ennis and drawn by uh, Derek Robinson. Uh, this guy right here, it's a character named Lil Huey. He may look familiar, it's because they based him off of Simon Pegg because at this point in time when they did this, like space was huge in England and space had also made a few references to the preacher. So hey, they wanted see? to include, yeah, there it we go. comes full circle. Full circle. This is a very good one. It's sort of like an extreme watchman point of view on superheroes where they're completely, you know, they're they, not squeaky clean. Yeah, they're not squeaky clean. They're corrupt and very immoral, like behind closed doors. All these people that you see here uh, on the cover are basically like collateral damage victims of superheroes, and they've been selected to sort of police these superheroes by the by the U.S. government. Uh, a cool like I said, premise. I yeah. must admit. <laughs> For people who are more familiar with the Garth Ennis's The Preacher. You would probably really appreciate this one. This one is Chronicles of Wormwood. Now, Chronicles of Wormwood is sort of Ennis' take on what would be like the Omen storyline, uh, where you have uh, Daniel Wormwood, who is, uh, who is the Antichrist. He is aware he is the Antichrist. However, and this is sort of the big difference, is he has no interest and being the Antichrist, you know, or like doing, you know, starting, doing starting the apostle. Things. Yeah, like he, he, but because he clearly says in the comic, he's like, I'd rather let just people be up to their own devices. He's basically a normal guy. He runs a uh, network, like it'd be like an HBO or something like that. His Antichrist status constantly kind of fucks up his regular life because uh, his father is always trying to trick him and deceive him into doing stuff. Um, he also has to deal with, uh, you know, the Vatican trying to kill, you know, find him and kill him, which, <laughs> which the, of course, in this one, the, the Pope, if you, you know, if you've ever read The Preacher, you know how Garth Ennis feels about, uh, Catholic Church. Catholicism, and, yeah. you know, and, uh, the preach, the, the, the Pope in this is very sadistic and... Oh, he's not all yeah. hip and with it like the current oh, no. Pope? Oh, no, 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 He is actually quite corrupt Aww. and sadistic. Um, oh, so he's the one that was before the current Pope where he looked like the Emperor. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Benedict. Good. His best friend, uh, is Jesus, but... It's not Jesus, like, as we know him, it's a mentally handicapped Jesus, because, <laughs> yeah, well, like, what, basically, what happens is he come during his second coming, he comes back to, you know, try to, try to set the record straight about everything he, like, every lesson he ever taught before, uh, it was corrupted by, by the church, by other, and, you know, by other various organizations and what have you. And um, unfortunately, while he's doing that, he's at an anti-war rally where he gets hit in the head with a baton by a racist cop. And and it's Jesus is like, black, by the way. Yes, Jesus is black. If you can't see that on the cover, which which is which is awesome. Yeah, basically, Danny is sort of his caretaker. They go on adventures and stuff. And it's really interesting. It, it says a lot about religion. Uh, really questions just you know how how people view it uh, much in the same way that uh, the preacher did you know it's told within an odd couple story like exactly yeah. <laughs> but, but no it's much more than that it's actually it's a good read I would recommend this yeah that sounds so. interesting you may not really be into like superheroes or you know questioning religion well I got this one for you it's this is just a straight up gritty noir crime story uh, this is called hit it's done by Bryce Carlson and, and it's drawn by Vanessa Del Rey Imagine Gangster Squad, but good. Um, oh, that's uh, kind of tough. Yeah, but it's it basically it's it's nineteen uh, fifties L.A. Uh, dealing with sort of seedy cops that are taking the law in their own hands to try to stop these mobsters and criminals that are all over the city. 
Well, at the same time, you know, they're quite, you know, you're questioning their morality and doing it. It's like, it's one of those things of like, yes, you're, 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 you're getting these guys off the street and you're, you know, but at the same time, what price are you paying? You know, it's and that's it's it's a really good story. They're going after Mickey Cohen, mm -hmm. which a lot of conspiracy theorists really feel that there was a you know conspiracy by the cops to try to like bend the law to uh, to get him off the streets. So I mean, that's kind of what this is what this is alluding to. This is by Boom Comics. They did a very very cool Hellraiser comic yep. book series, which is rad as fuck. Yeah, I'm only two issues in. Like I like this is the one that I'm actually currently reading. So. And I'm actually, I'm looking forward to seeing how it ends up. It's only a four-issue story. The other ones I mentioned, uh, Chronicles of Wormwood, it's by Avatar Press. And the, uh, it's written by um, uh, Garth Ennis and, uh, what was that? Dynamite Comics, who has, does The Boys, also written by Garth Ennis. These are all very good titles if you were, you know, wanting something that's not, in the, not done by the uh, mainstream comic book guys. Uh, but still great reads and uh, you know take them on the train with you. You know, that's what I did Just don't let people look over your shoulder because they might look at you in horror. <laughs> this was always very awkward if you can see that <laughs> so. Oh on the back? Yeah. Yeah a little bit. Not half as awkward as this <laughs> So <laughs> Yeah, that's a threesome <laughs> Holy shit <laughs> yeah. Okay, I just, I just finally clicked. That's like, I'm like, okay, there's a couple making out. Yeah. There's a guy watching. She's got her hand on the stack. Oh, he's cupping a tit. Yeah. So, like I said, I mean, if you don't give a shit, you know, read him on the train. I don't care. A A.M. Um. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm Eric Lynch. Huh? Sounds like Xavier. Go fuck yourself. Well, that's a wrap. Ah. Thank you so much for coming, dude. You really you you, you saved my ass. Hey, no problem, man. It was uh, it was a good time. I um, any you know I'm, I was just happy to help you out, man. Oh, okay. well, yeah. So uh, I guess we'll just call it a night because uh, I got to be up in the morning for work. So well, there is one more thing, dude. What you said that there would be a warm meal at the end of this. Uh, I don't see any food, so make with the food, dude. I'm starving. Oh. Do I look like Daryl fucking Dixon? Well, you do have a bitch mouth. Alright, I guess we'll do this. Sorry, girl. Stop being such a pussy. <laughs> <laughs>